Hello again, in this series we're looking at low poly stylized stones. In this episode we're looking at painting, using our ambient occlusion, cavity and normals as a guide to help us colour our stones. Now I'm assuming you have a basic understanding of texture painting and painting. I have two tutorials on this in the description and a card will appear in the corner for each at the appropriate time. So if this is a bit confusing, then visit those tutorials to gain a further insight. Okay, so I've got my stone. Here's the low poly version, and here's the baked details. So there's the ambient occlusion, the cavity, and the normals. And I've already started hooking them up, so if I go to rendered mode, you'll see that I've hooked the normals up. Let's just maximize the screen with shift spacebar. And you can see I brought the stone normals in, and that's set to non-color data, into a normal map, into the normals of the principal shader. So I changed my shader to the principal shader. Someone gave me a great shortcut for this. You can click on the shaders and press shift S, and that way you can change its attributes rather than having to delete it and then add the principal shader. You can just change the shader with shift S. I've also got my stone ambient occlusion which I need to change to non-color data, and stone cavity. So let's go back into our normal view with Shift Z again. I'm just gonna bring this up like this, zoom out a bit so we can see the node editor a bit closer. So I'm gonna add a mix node with color mix RGB. So I'm gonna combine two colors and I'm gonna put my ambient occlusion in the bottom and the color I'm gonna to set to mid gray. So at the moment it's a 50% mix. If I control Shift, click, you can see what it looks like. And of course, at the moment, I've got the Node Wrangler add-on installed. You can go up to File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and then install the Node Wrangler there. And Control shift will help you to see the different nodes in isolation. And you can always press Control shift to click on your main node again. So for now, let's look at our mix color. It's just a mix at the moment, so I'm getting 50% of the ambient occlusion and 50% of gray. If I put it all the way up to 1, then that's all the ambient occlusion. And all the way down, it's all the gray. And you can see how difficult this would be to paint on without this information from the normals, cavity, or ambient occlusion to guide us. So what I'm going to do is change this to multiply. There's no effect at the moment, but when I introduce the other one now, it just affects this and it multiplies the color out. So it brings out the darkness. I'm going to use my cavity now as well. So shift A, color mix RGB again, and I'm going to put that in there and put my cavity into the bottom. And again, it's a 50% mix. So we're seeing a bit of this and a bit of that, 50-50. You can see with the cavity, it's got these nice white bits to highlight the edges, as well as the dark bits in the cavities. And a combination of the two can work very well. So I change this, Control shift click on that to see it. I'll change this to Overlay, and then I'll be able to see the white bits coming through, the ambient occlusion, and the gray there. So in order to paint, I want to plug into here so I can paint some color, and I can also keep the detail of the cavity mask and the ambient occlusion there as well. So I need to come over to my UV editor, add a new texture, I'm going to call it stone color base and have 2048 by 2048 and I don't need the alpha. I think it's a good idea to have a base color, so 50% gray rather than just black and that will give us a good base to work from and press OK. Now I need to make sure it's in here, so let's duplicate this one, shift D to duplicate and change this to stone base color. Now I've made a mistake here, I haven't changed it from non-color data, which was the duplicate, to color data. So later on, I change it back and sort out the mistake. But I've left the mistake in because I think it's helpful to see the types of mistakes you might make. So remember to change it from non-color data to color data, otherwise you'll get quite a washed out paint when you start painting. And you'll see that from what I do up until right to the end of this tutorial. So if I click on this, you can see this detail coming through here. And if I hook this up to my multiply node, we should just have a base gray coming all the way through and it should look pretty much the same as it did before. And something I didn't mention before is that in my scene, I've got four lights. I just used sun lamps and pointed them all in different directions so I can light the object fairly evenly and also I can move them around if I want to just check the shading and things. So they're all just a basic sun lamp with the, an emission of one. Okay, so let's go back to our stone and hook up our painted texture there. Shift Z, and this is what it looks like at the moment, and we want to be able to paint on this image texture here. So I'll just move these out of the way. So let's go across to paint mode, and I'm still in rendered view, I need to be in material, otherwise it will struggle to keep up whilst I'm painting. And material rather than texture. Texture will only show you the texture selected, 
whereas material will show you your full texture from the material output. Then you can use the normal map and so forth as a guide. And I must have the image texture that I want to paint to selected here. Let's just pull this down for now and let's just test it by putting it all the way to white and painting. And that's working as you can see there. Got a bit of pink in there for some reason. So I'll undo that. I know it's working because I've got my stone color base here and it was painting on there and I've got it selected here. And I've got it hooked up so I can see the effects and I can see the normal maps and cavity and ambient occlusion in here as well to guide me. So at this stage I can maximize this screen with shift spacebar and start painting. Now there's lots of different styles you might want to go for. I'm just going to go very basic and make it look roughly stone-like. So a bit of bluish gray. There are a couple of options you might want to check. So in your options, the bleed, you might want to put that up to about six and that's just the uh, bleed over the edges. So it will go over the edges slightly and you won't be able to see your seams so easily. So that's worth doing. And I think cull and normals are checked by default. They can be a bit of a pain. Uh, so if I'm painting here, it won't paint on the face this side that it can't see. And actually that's just a bit irritating and annoying because you have to move your shape around a lot to paint in the gaps. And then you end up painting over your brush several times and it looks a bit grubby. Leave a clue on because that will stop you painting all the way through the shape and onto the other side. So back to our tools and let's start painting this on. That's a nice bright color there. And just randomly painting colors. So I'll put some yellow in there as well. Just blotch it on in areas. And I'm just randomly painting areas to make it look stone-like. I might want to aid the ambient occlusion maps a bit. So maybe scale this down, a bit of darker color, and just pull these dents out a bit more, give them a bit more depth. I might also want to highlight the edges just that touch more as well. So make it nice and bright. And this will come down to artistic ability and experience to a degree. But just slowly build up. And because we've already got our ambient occlusion and our cavity mask, we've already got a very good base to start with. So we can just color this in and have a bit of fun. You can really experiment a great deal with the colors if you want sort of mixture of colored rocks. And every now and again, you might want to go across to rendered view to see what it looks like. So it's just lightly shaded at the moment. Now it looks like I've got a slight issue with my normal map there, but occasionally that's just cycles and the way the lights are set up and you can easily adapt your lights and that doesn't make so much of an influence. Now you might want to go for heavily stylized rocks. So I'll go back into material mode and make sure my texture is selected and you might want some strange sort of lines on it like this. So some really unusual stylized rocks like this and you can use the smear brush to sort of smear them together but this can be quite processor intensive and it can really sort of slow down your brush. If you do get any glitches like this as well, the smear brush is very useful for smearing them out. So some interesting sort of stylized rocks like that. I don't think it really works for this particular stone, so I'm not going to do that, but just sort of the things you can do. So I'm undoing those. Another thing we can do is with our texture brush, I like to have texture brushes to paint with. So I'm just gonna pull out this screen for a moment so we can see a bit more. And I'm gonna make a new brush and I'm gonna call it textures. So there's texture and texture mask. Texture is if you want to paint with an actual texture. So let's say I had a stone image texture. I'd put that in there and I could use it as a stencil or paint with it. And texture mask is kind of like brushes in Photoshop. So it's the shape of your brush. I've got more tutorials about textures on my channel and I'll put a card in the corner now. But let's go into texture masks. Let's create a new. And when you create a new brush, you come over to the textures over here and change it to brush mask texture. You name it over here, it's a little bit easier to see, but at the moment it's just brush mask texture. And let's open a brush. And brushes should look black and white like this. So the areas of white will paint and the areas of black won't. 
and you can see I've got lots of brushes which I use a lot for sculpting but these sort of brushes are very good for stone perhaps this one will be a good one I use textures.com for most of my brushes but I just generally get them around the place I'm pretty sure they're all copyright free I do look for that now when I paint you can see that is guiding my brush head. So I'm going to undo that and change the color a bit, make it bigger and in fact when I press F you can see the mask in the brush now. So I'm just going to put the strength up a bit of that. What you do have to watch out for a bit is this sort of stretching. That's if I've painted up here and it slides down the side and stretches across there. That's a bit frustrating and you can use the smear brush to get rid of that as you can see it working there but generally it's very good to just avoid it altogether if you can so just adapting the colors a bit at the moment I'm using mask mapping of random you can set this to things like tiled so when you when you paint across it will tile your brush or there's based on the view plane the best one I feel is random it's a bit like Photoshop then, what you'd expect it to do. I'm still getting this slight glitch here and again the best way to deal with those is the smear brush. I haven't found many ways of coping with that and it seems to work sometimes on some brushes and not on others. So I get the smear brush and I can smear those glitches out. I don't find that so bad in Blender Render, Blender Internal when I'm painting in there, so that sometimes is a better option. The more seams you have, the worse it is, so if I had unwrapped this a bit better, then that might solve the problem as well. Let's try a different texture, so I can add a new texture down here by pressing the plus sign and brush mask texture 001 I believe I'll just check that by pulling this out texture 001 so it's brush mask texture 001 which I've got it on here let's open up another brush so perhaps a more detailed one like this and I'm gonna to have to turn the strength right up because it's not particularly detailed on this this might be good for filling out the areas where I need a bit extra shading I think subtlety is the key. I went a bit overboard there, so I've pulled it back slightly. So I'm just varying the colours that little bit and painting in. You can see a fair glitch in my normal map here. I don't think that'll be noticeable too much when I'm fully rendered and zoomed out that touch. So from about here it's not too bad. But what you can do is colour that in quite dark to help the normal map. So this might be easy without the mask, so the good thing is I've got my other brush just here and I can pull that down to black and paint in there like so. Back to my texture brush. I'm not sure I like this one so much, so I'll try a different one. What you can put in here as well, if I press uh, new, you can create your own brushes by coming over here and going to, let's say, clouds. And there now I've got a cloudy brush and you can see it if I press F you can see what that looks like. Now I've just noticed I've made a mistake so I'll point this out in the beginning so that you don't go through the same thing but all the time I've been painting I've been painting on non-color data and you can see over here that it's actually much richer color than it is over here. If I change this now to color data you can see the colors coming through in a much richer way which I hadn't realized which is why I had my strengths up so high. Surprisingly that's not too bad to sort out because you can go to your fill brush and turn it down and let's go for a mid gray again so all these should be around 0.5 and then I can just click on the shape and it will fill the whole thing in with a mid gray and make it less powerful. So watch out for that because I duplicated one of these it was already on non-color data so I'll leave that mistake in so you can one have a good laugh at me and two if you do the same thing and it's not coming out all rich and colorful like it is over here. I should have been checking over here and should have realized my mistake really. Okay what we also need to do is go image save as image and I'm saving this as stone color base 
And at the moment, this is what it looks like, and we want to affect the glossiness channel. So I'll get it to a point there where we can really see the gloss coming across. And it's on a roughness of 50%. So if I turn it up to fully rough, you get a nice rough stylized look. And if I turn it to 100% shiny, it looks a bit silly and fully reflective. What we can use for this, we've got two options, the easy option and the hard option. The hard option is to paint on a mask. So this can be affected by a mask, so black and white information, and the whites will be fully rough and the blacks will be fully reflective, and anything in between will be somewhere in between. What we can do is we can use our cavity map just here, and we can bring it into the roughness. Now if I bring it in at the moment, straight in, and let's just remind ourselves what that looks like with control click. So the white bits are going to be very rough and the dark bits are going to be shiny. Now really where the stone edges are, you'd expect them to be more shiny, almost like they've been polished by the weather and being bumped. And in the crevices, you'd expect them to be rough. So we want to invert this mask. So what we need to do is to put an inverter in. So shift A, color invert, and put that in. Now what does it look like? It looks super shiny. So let's see what this looks like with control shift on that. The blacks are going to be very shiny because it's roughness and the whites are going to be dull. But somehow we need to bring the shininess down. So what we can do is we can press shift A and put a converter color ramp in. Let's put it in here and let's view that with control shift. If I bring the blacks up, that should make it shinier. So let's have a look again. Yep, it's working. It seems to work better this side of the inverter than the other side for some reason. I'm sure someone would understand why that is. Maybe they can tell me. But so inverter, then the color ramp, and then the principal shader. And if I bring the white back and see what it looks like, it's a bit more rough. Let's just move around. It's not bad. It depends on the style you want to go for. I'm gonna go somewhere around there. If you feel the dark bits here are always too dark, so no matter how far I pull the whites, they pretty much say the same. You can click on your black dial there and bring this back to something like gray. Let's see what that looks like. I quite like that look at the moment. The harder way of course is to paint onto this mask. So what you would need to do is duplicate this file if you want to use the cavity mask that is. I'll just get that up in here and then paint on this. So if you wanted these to be shinier or this to be more glossy in areas, you can paint on it with a rough brush in the same way as we've done before. But that's probably taking it a bit far for this tutorial and I've probably confused you enough. So hopefully you've got the idea about using basic painting but still using the ambient occlusion and the cavity mask and hopefully I've given you some idea about the roughness value in the principal shader. I'm hoping that most people have an understanding of the principal shader before coming into this tutorial really. There's some very good tutorials about that on Blender Guru. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description for that as well. So that completes the tutorial for our low poly stylized stone. I won't be doing a video on exporting to Unity as I've already done that and it is exactly the same process. But do look out for tutorials where we'll advance our skills in sculpting and texturing. Thanks for all your feedback and comments. If you'd like to support me, I do have a Patreon and please comment in the description with any thoughts about the series. Thanks for watching.